All right, everybody, welcome back. This is uh, Dan Harley, Tech Talk with Dan Harley, episode number 99. Was it the Pakistanis who hacked the DNC? Uh, recorded on August 8th, 2017. Yeah, I've been missing uh, my deadlines on the, for publishing episodes lately. I've been uh, two weeks out here. And my apologies, part of it is I've been, I've been extremely busy with other projects. And also I'm working on a new format after the 100th episode, which is going to be the next one. So it, I can't believe we got this far. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to continue on here. Anyway, I had to, a couple weeks ago, I had some excitement about with the DNC and Desi Washman Schultz and her so called IT consultant. And I've been following this issue more than I actually want to, but um, many asked what I thought from a technical perspective because this is obviously a very technically oriented, oriented issue. And that's what this episode is going to be all about. And uh, so, anyway, um, a little recap. The episode number 98 was how pornography had shaped small business technology. And you may, believe it or not, porn had actually shaped a lot of technology we're using today in our everyday lives as well as our business lives. So, uh, if you want to find out how and why, uh, check it back on that episode of number 98. So, now before we get into, into today's topic here, let's uh, make some announcements here. First of all, thanks for listening and watching. I very much appreciate it. And that's why I keep on doing these episodes, uh, producing episodes of Tech Talk with Dan Harley, and why I have as major sponsors. So, now if you're listening to, on iTunes or Android Podcasts, or if you're watching on YouTube, or if you found us on Facebook, please rate my show, uh, submit a review, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, some kudos, some questions, like my page, all that good stuff. None of and. Um, and if you do that, you know, we'll notify, you'll get notified when my next Tech Talk episode will be broadcasted. Very much appreciated because all this stuff helps me grow my show, grow the audience. If you need to find me on YouTube or Facebook or or the podcast show, there's uh, all the links are at primeconces.net. That's P R I M E C O N C E P T S dot N E T. Uh, once again, you find all the links to the podcast show, the YouTube channel, the Facebook page. Also, lots of great information on the site. Uh, lots of free tutorials on business and internet related topics. Especially my favorite, um, my my favorite show is free and almost free ways to advertise your business online. Absolutely, absolutely free there. Uh, so please pass the word, share the episode, and tell us about the podcast show, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. And a quick legal disclaimer, products mentioned in this and other episodes of Tech Talk with Dan Harley could be paid as affiliate commission, promotion commission, or the liking by the product or service provider. So in other words, I might try to sell you something. And speaking of that, let's talk about our, our sponsor, Carbonite. And if you do not back up your computer and important data on a regular basis, you risk losing important data in a matter of split seconds. And, and, and split, it's happened to me quite a few times. And uh, you know your accounting files, your your personal documents, your family pictures, and other important files can be lost forever. And that's why you need something like Carbonite. Well, Carbonite is a cloud backup service, but what it really sets itself apart from other services is it's very very easy to use. Renowned for being being very easy to install and very easy to use. No technical skills required. Um, backs up everything on your computer automatically and high quality encryption. So if you're in a in an industry such as the health health industry, or um, or legal industry, you you'll be happy to know that they have um, they have secured security to comply with those industries. Uh, no worries, no hassles. Very affordable, less than twenty cents per day to back up and protect your entire computer. So we partnered up with Carbonite uh, quite a few years ago, uh, years ago, a few months ago, as a sponsor here. So we allowed to give you a special offer. So you can actually try Carbonite for free. That's right, for free. And you can find that at primeconsensnet slash link slash Carbonite. That's primeconsensnet slash link slash Carbonite. Or go to primeconsensnet and you'll find the link right there. So also, if you're having problems with your business, if you think spending too much too much on a website or internet advertising and not getting anywhere, uh, if you know um, if, if you know if you need to know how to get online with your business and try to make it work for you or you don't you don't understand what's going on, you know, give us a call. We have our initial consultation is always free, and we can uh, many business owners have, have, have uh, utilized that and get themselves in the in the right direction, save them a lot of money, save a lot of time, save a lot of headaches. And our initial consultation is always free. And you can find us at, you, to set, schedule an appointment, you can call us at 760-247-4814. That's 
247-4814 or go to primeconsoles.net and find information there. So anyway, on to the the the, the topic today is uh, why was it the Pakistanis that hacked the DNC? Well, a little story here. A, uh, a Russian-born IT consultant, keep in mind, a Russian-born IT, IT consultant with ties to the RNC chair was arrested. He tried to board a flight to Moscow. And he wired, before he did that, he wired hundreds of thousands of dollars on false pretenses and destroyed hard eyes and other data. And this is crazy stuff. So why wasn't this in our mainstream media news? Well, what happened was the exact opposite happened. So a guy named Imran Arwan, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to hack his name a little bit, was arrested trying to flee the country. His wife already left the country with thousands of dollars on her. Um, he is currently held for fraud, but expected to be indicted on many other charges. So why this guy important? Well, he's part of the fraud ring that's basically screwing our, our government over, especially the DNC. See, this guy here, I took the interest in this guy here quite a while ago. Because um, it, uh, him being the technical background, we kind of watch this stuff. But this particular person got my attention. Uh, he claims to be an IT consultant, and he really hardly has a background for it. For, for it, and, and um, he's done. He's involved with a lot of mischievous, mischievous activities surrounding the the Des Debbie Washerman Schultz and the DNC. In fact, he is the he is Debbie Washerman Schultz's primary consultant, IT consultant. So anyway, so what happened? How do you get to this part here? Um, well, in about 2005, Awan was hired, and he's still in the early 20s, and as an as network and IT specialist for several people in the, in the Democratic House members, including Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and subsequently his wife and brothers were also hired. Now he didn't have much experience, and neither did his wife. In fact. His previous experience, from what I can tell, he was something like in Geek Squad, but not necessarily Best Buy. Um, and he was fired for it. <laughs> so, and this guy was in his early 20s at this time here. And um, he worked for a, a significantly high level of, of our government. And what's particularly interested here is this guy's security was ex his security clearance. Because when you work in those, in, those, in those arenas, you have to have certain security clearance. His clearance was expedited, which is not easy to do to start off with, and especially for the the background he had, which is kind of weird. So a little explanation on how difficult it is to get security clearance, because I do that, I go through that quite a bit in what I do, and um, I, I get security clearance from going in, in certain prison that facilities and um, government facilities, military facilities, so on and so forth. Sometimes it, it happens very quickly, um, within 24 hours. Other times, in fact, one time I recall, I can't tell you what the, what the project was, but it took two months for me to get to declare just for a two-hour meeting. And uh, for a person like this, which has, and when you work at, at a level with the House representatives and the government level there, quite often, that, that for many people, that is a pinnacle of, 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 of a career for an IT consultant. Uh, for this guy, had all of a sudden in his early twenties, um, who had questionable background in IT in IT knowledge, all of a sudden not only has it get receives a job, but it gets cleared uh, way through the clearance the situation here. That kind of draws up red flags flags for us other us other IT folks that seem to be swept up swept under the rug. So now, what this Subsequently, this guy had access to emails and computers of many Democratic representatives. He also had access to all information on, on the House network. That includes emails. That includes conf confidential files. And furthermore, he and his wife and his brothers tried to cover it all up. By the way, too, I should mention here, too, that his brothers were hired as well. Two of them were never seen, ever, yet they were charged for services uh, they were on house payrolls. They were being getting paid in six figures a, a year. Uh, they get paid three times more than others in that in the in the comparable in the comparable positions. Also, they were charging double for price of, uh, for hardware that was never delivered uh, for service that was never performed. I mean, we're talking a lot of really pretty crony crummy stuff that's going on here. 
that even the private sector, this, these people who had gotten the boot a long time ago, yet they were lingered on for years doing this, getting paid three or four times more than other IT consultants that were working for compatible um, representatives, so on and so forth, and causing all this, all these problems. So, um, and I'm going, what the heck's going on here? And hardly a word has come out about this. Yes, granted, it's our government's large and th things happen, but somebody somewhere had to say this is enough. Enough is enough. And uh, apparently, over the years, these the M1 Iran and his family had accumulated over four million dollars, probably even closer to five million dollars, uh, paid by paid by Congress, our, us our tax money. So. And along the lines there, in their non-government issues, they were trying to create a car dealership. And uh, they took a loan from an Iraqi, a really a shady Iraqi guy, who's actually wanted by the Department of Justice. So th this is pretty bad. If you're, if you had security clearance in the house for in a government institution such as they had, and they are connected with a questionable Iraqi citizen that's one of my Department of Justice, that's enough red flag to say, maybe we should not work with these folks. But still, that was kind of swept under the red here, too. Also, they made uh, they were in, involved with numerous real estate deals where they're doing some shady uh, mortgage mortgages back and forth. I mean, it goes on and on. And, and they were creating a lot of debt. They tried to, they, they, smiled, they filed bankruptcy, all kinds of stuff. Um, just before shit hit the fan for lack of better terms um emron tried to wire th over three hundred thousand dollars to pakistan by the way i should back up here too these folks had access to very uh, supposed to be classified information and they were utilizing off-site servers to acquire this information and so this was going on for quite a while until they were finally got caught but before i get to that let's talk about um the wiring happened because the, the wiring transaction anyway uh imran here tried to wire three hundred thousand dollars to pakistan and he claimed it was for funeral expenses and this is from the house uh, bank that um that's that that um the, those the people that work for the government that work for government go through uh the first uh reason was declined and then he came back literally said well it's for uh, he changed his mind says, well, claim for property, buying property in Pakistan. And that was way through. Um, that unnerves me. That was so easy to do that. And then finally, what should have been the straw that broke the camel's back or the ultimate finality of, of this this family's um, fiasco here, in February 2017, uh, finally, Imran Iran, Iran and his family were indicted uh, for security issues under an in investiga investigation, um, they were stealing. They're caught, caught for stealing equipment for house members, and um, it's went it went bad. And they were stripped from accessing the house servers. Uh, and uh, all all his then he was this these this family was working for several Democratic representatives, and but all but Desby Washington Saltz fired them subsequently after this incident. Debbie, Debbie Washington Saltz kept them on and uh, and changed the title to advisor, IT advisor, is supposed, and to keep them on payroll. So we're going, why doing Why? <laughs> Against, again, why is it, are we doing this here? Obviously, something is being trying to be covered up. So this guy is, really, this guy and his family is toxic, yet Debbie Washington Saltz still keeps, keeps him on. So... In the next month, his wife left the country. Essentially, he she had all the rolling presents on her, plus twelve thousand dollars in cash, and somehow, some way, she was waved on, and she's absconded. Now, on through all this stuff here, Awan and his wife and his family had all these real estate issues going on. Uh, Awan rents his old house to a, to a marine, who had found a cache, a stash of computer equipment and hard drives and all kinds of, including a laptop and subsequently turn all these over to the FBI. This is fairly recent. And then Awan starts freaking out. Now Debbie Washerman Stoltz not only goes to his goes 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 to his defense and uh, questions trying to get his to keep his back his his laptop back. 
And then a couple days later, Awan tries, this happened just a couple weeks ago, actually, tries to flee the, flee the country. And he's arrested at the airport. And his arrest is over bank fraud. But uh, legal analysts believe this is going to be just simply a placeholder for much, much worse uh, crimes to indict him on. So, and um, all of a sudden, an attorney for the Clinton Foundation represents Awan and claims this whole thing is a mistake and it's over racism. So this is pretty crazy stuff across the board. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this outright. I'm a libertarian, so I am not necessarily completely Republican. But I'll tell you up front here, I really don't like um, uh, the Clintons that much uh, for mayor, for many reasons. So I certainly didn't vote for her. So this this gentleman and his family have been lingering in the tech in the tech industry or or, or the in, in in the ways here for quite a while so that's somebody like me gets uh, gets gets attention to him um for my opinion here this guy here is definitely connected to uh, the dnc probably and very likely connected to the um uh, to the clintons and especially and especially des wasserman's debbie wasserman Schultz, and it's very likely in my opinion that, that a, a significant leak Amongst the DNC and amongst other things that have been doing that patting over there. So, to summarize here, um, Awan's technical knowledge is at best questionable. This gentleman here, um, his it just his sheer age and experience um, suggests to me that he does not have the technical skills to be where he was at. It's somehow, some way, he was he was given a job, and his family given a job. Where they certainly were not qualified for, and then paid two, three, four times the rate as somebody who would be qualified for those positions. Uh, his business ethics were, are terrible. Um, he has uh, left a, a scorched earth behind him regarding real estate transactions and transactions with with the questionable folks out there. Uh, his access to critical and confidential government data is definitely confirmed, and with that in mind. What he did with that data, data is, is very questionable. It, it's very likely the data, the confidential information, w was was handed over, was was um, funneled from Awan and his and his workings to people we may not, we may not want that information going to. Um, there, there's talk about um, Muslim Brotherhood, so on and so forth, but. What's def definitive here is a want had access to that information and could, be, could have very easily transported out of the house system, out of the house security system. That's the reason why he has been um, investigated since February regarding all this. Um, he definitely tried to destroy data and evidence that that's been affirmed. And um, definitely Washington Solts definitely tried to cover for him. That's been affirmed. Why she's gone through all this all, all this way here for for some, somebody who's essentially a nobody or supposed to be nobody uh, is uh, questionable. You know, in fact, she was very blatant and arrogant and sloppy about all this. It is uh, just uh, it just uh, kind of repulsive to me, actually, why she's going through all this. And personally, um, I think Awan and his family are the major leak. Are a major leak of DNC information, and what had happened with the Clintons and, and the DNC falling apart last year during the during the elections. Um, Deb Wasserman Schultz is definitely covering something up or trying to cover, cover something up. She's gone way out of her way to, to to cover this cover for this guy here. So um, another question is: all this stuff's going on. You know, why hasn't mainstream media spent more time on this? You know. Um, and it's, it suggests mainstream media is definitely trying to cover this cover something up. Like I say, in the beginning of this all the year, the story here is: had this been a Russian uh, IT guy who tried to take off to Russia to, to Moscow um, in the in the in the middle of the night, as like Awan had it had here, it would definitely be mainstream media and they, and uh, the likings of, of CNN and MSNBC and all this stuff. We'd be all over this, but you hear nothing. So uh, this is definitely going on this is definitely an active issue going on here and for my opinion it's definitely going to be much much larger um as this onion is peeled away from this so 
very likely I'm going to follow up this in the near future. Um, and uh, if at the least, it's it's um, a curiosity to me why this guy here got away, gotten so far, and concerned too. Why somebody like this with a shady past, a checkered history, a checkered relationships all over the place would have gotten into so well embedded into our government uh, facilities and bypassing all their, all their common sense um, security measures to get to where he's at and his family too. This obviously would concern me. It should concern you folks out there too. So anyway, obviously I'm going to follow up on this here in the in the future when if something happens. So keep abreast of that. In the meantime, um, for the for you folks out there, if you um, I'm going to wrap this up. If you want to, you know, let's say if you have any problems with the business, you want to drive more customers to your business, you want to do it cheaper and faster, and then you need to use it in there to do it. And we can help you. So you give us a call at uh, and set up for a free consultant at. Um, PrineConstant.net, or you can call us at 760-247-4814 or send email to info at PrineConstant.net. And by the way, the next episode is going to be in episode number 100. And I'm going to have a panel on here. We have a special um, celebration for that. So I want to thank all you folks out there who stuck it out for the 99 episodes up till now um, being my uh, as my listeners and followers. So greatly appreciate that. And you're going to see a big change here in the next, next episode and subsequent episodes. So thanks a lot for sticking around and looking forward to, here, looking forward to doing this um, for, for, the, for here on out. So, well, uh, so for, for, until then, God, God bless you. God bless you guys. Good luck and Godspeed to your online success.